Trevor Bauer is the premier top free agent this offseason. Are teams holding out on other free agents to see if they can perhaps persuade Bauer to join their club in 2021? Hey guys, just want to give you guys a quick update before we get into the video. Kyle Schwarber was signed to a one-year $10 million contract to the Washington Nationals today. Schwarber was non-tendered by the Cubs after last season, according to MLB.com's reporter Mark Feensand. Schwarber will be joining Josh Bell and Juan Soto in that lineup. Nationals, they're building. They're building their team for the years to come. Also, just quickly, I will be streaming right after this video goes live. So go ahead and head over to my Twitch, at Tabor Time Gaming. Link in the description below. Come join me. I'll be playing NBA 2K21 Season Mode. It's going to be a blast. Uh, I think I'm going to be using the Celtics. So if you guys are interested to see what uh, NBA 2K21 looks like on the PS5, then head on over there and, and uh, check it out. So hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today's video is all about... Trevor Bauer, the big question mark this offseason, where he will be going. Nobody really truthfully knows. Uh, Bauer may not even know himself at this point. Everybody wants Bauer. That's really truthfully, that, that's what we know. That's about all we know. All we know is that everybody wants this guy. He was the 2020 NL Cy Young Award winner. And the guy posted a 1.73 ERA in 2020. He started in 11 games, he went 5 for 4, and he posted an ERA of 1.73. That's really all you need to know. The Reds really struggled in 2020, which is where Bauer was in 2020, was with the Cincinnati Reds. He did help push them into the playoffs, but they got swept by the Braves in the first round. They, they didn't score a run. They didn't score a run in that entire series. And that was really just the downfall of the Cincinnati Reds all last season. Wasn't necessarily the pitching, but it was the offense for the Cincinnati Reds. And so, you know, on most clubs, you're posting a 1.73 ERA. You're going to have a tremendously good record. 2020 was a little weird. There was only 60 games total. Bauer started in 11 games in the regular season. Everybody wants to know where Bauer is going. And so I'm not so much about the MLB.com reports or the MLB Network reports. Actually, Trevor Bauer is actually an outspoken guy and will he will shoot down reports that he believes are, you know, are portraying false information about him. He'll shoot down reports that, that he thinks lead to false information about where he may potentially sign. He wants to be in control of the information around his free agency, and for good reason. I mean, he, he's an employee of the MLB baseball. Uh, you know, he has those rights. He has every bit to be releasing information to fans on where he may be going or what's going on in his mind. Uh, that's absolutely, completely understandable, and, and he has a right to do so. Trevor Bauer and Agent Rachel Luba, they're good for the sport. They really are. I follow both of them on Twitter, as you guys can see. They're, they're making Trevor Bauer's free agency publicly available. And in a time where, you know, it's been this way for years, where the information that is given to fans is secondhand. It is. It's secondhand information that is interpreted by reporters and then given to the public. And reporters can screw up. You know, I graduated from college with a journalism degree, but I can attest that, you know, journalists screw up. They screw up. Intel can be off. Information can be off. Sources can then say one thing, come back and say another. And it's too late because a reporter's job is to get out information as fast as possible. And that's a two edged sword. You know, information can be false just for the simple fact that, you know, you're, you're fighting the clock. And so uh, it's very important that Trevor Bauer and both his agent, Rachel Luba, are making his free agency process publicly available. That's firsthand information. It's not secondhand. It's firsthand information. It isn't reported on. It, it's direct reports. It is direct reports. It's direct research. It is direct sourcing of that information. And that is very important for building the following around MLB baseball. It's also very important for trustworthy information. 
you know, the information's accurate because it's coming directly from the source. I mean, it's just that simple. So here, Trevor Bauer is mentioning that he'll have a video up, you know, in the meantime on his on his YouTube to state and tell fans what's very important to him when he is assessing, you know, offers, when he's assessing offers from MLB clubs, which I actually don't know. No, he hasn't. He hasn't posted that video yet. So back to the Twitter again. Uh, So here, I'm just going to go ahead and read the statement verbatim. And this is an update from agent Rachel Luba, which is Bauer's representative this offseason. Trevor Bauer promised that his free agency would be different. So he wanted me to provide a brief update to his fans from his agent's standpoint. Trevor will discuss his own thoughts and priorities about what he's looking for in his next team on his YouTube channel. He hasn't done that yet. I've, I've, we've already looked at the YouTube channel. He hasn't uploaded that yet. So stay tuned for that in the coming dates. So far, we and Trevor have spoken to a number of teams, and Trevor is encouraged to hear so many teams and coaches talk about all the data and technology they're using to help players develop, as pushing that part of the game forward has been an important goal of his throughout his career. Free agency is a unique experience for players, and Trevor has enjoyed the process and the many incredible fans he's gotten the chance to know and interact with. He's looking forward to seeing fans back in the ballpark in 2021, as baseball was not the same without them. Trevor will make his free agent decision based on a variety of factors. For his priorities in free agency, see his upcoming YouTube video. And he's considering a number of different types of contracts and structures. Stay tuned here for further updates. Happy 2021. Again, the statement was from Agent Rachel Luba. You can follow her on her Twitter at Agent Rachel Luba. She is Bauer's representative this offseason. So, what does this mean? Well, it's a direct source, so we know it's accurate information. And it basically reiterates what we already know nothing. We know absolutely nothing. From a fan's perspective, we, we don't know where, where Bowers are going to sign. We have no idea. And so what you guys are going to see as I close out this video is my hypothetical for where Bauer will land. And that's what it is. It's complete hypothetical. Uh, you know, there's, there's not really anything stating he'll go to one team or the other. This is just my opinions on where Bauer will land. Here we go into the next segment. All right, so here we go. This is what I'm using for my ranking system. It is TierMaker. It's a free online tool. If you just go to TierMaker.com, you can make your own uh, ranking system, just as you're seeing here, my little chart that I have. So some of my photos like didn't transfer the way that I had imagined them transferring. So let me just... Uh, this right here that I'm going to pull up, that's the Angels. Obviously, this is the Mets. Um, this is the Giants, in case you didn't know. This is the Padres. This is probably the lesser known one. I don't know why it, DR dot doctor. <laughs> That's the Padres, and the rest should be pretty obvious. Okay, so here we go. Where is Trevor Bauer going? Trevor Bauer's options are really endless. There's no reports out there stating that he'll go to one team or the other. Um, the best that we know is, uh, what his agent, Rachel Luba, has already provided us, which you've already seen earlier in the video. Okay, here we go with the ranking. So let's start. Let's start with a team that I, I just don't think that is in, is in the running, and I think we can place in the pretender category, which is the Giants. The deal with the Giants is uh, they're rebuilding. They are. Um, Bauer would be getting a hell of a paycheck if he signed there, but I, I just don't see it happening. I don't see it happening. They're in the rebuilding phases. They, um, you know, there's just a huge question mark there with some of their players, Brandon Crawford, Brandon Bell. Um, you know, if if the small pieces that they still do have will even stay there, which they, they don't have many pieces as it is, the pitching is is horrific. Um, they've they've really struggled with the pitching. Um, they have brought in a few guys this offseason, but I 
I just don't see Bauer signing there. I really don't. I am placing the Giants in the pretender category. Next, we're going with the Astros. Astros, I wish that there was a little section between Dark Horse teams and pretenders. I think I'm placing them in pretenders. I don't think that the Astros are a liable option for Trevor Bauer. Um, Bauer is very outspoken against the elite use of illegal substances. Uh, recently in that report by the LA Times, Justin Verlander's name was mentioned in that conversation. So I don't know if Bauer is technically throwing dirt on those guys. Um, you know, Garrett Cole is really his, he really, you know, Bauer really has a thing with Garrett Cole. And that is why I'm also placing the Yankees in the pretenders category because Garrett Cole and Justin Verlander's name names are attached to that LA Times report and I just I see a thing I I don't know what it is but I see a whoa we do not need that on the screen there we go we can actually get rid of both of these so uh yeah I mean I I just I don't see Bauer signing with the Yankees he's very knowledgeable and he's very smart about how he comments on those reports and um i think he's wanting to make a statement um to the fans and to the league of you know it should be the either be no or go and the league shouldn't be dancing around the whole use of legal substances situation i think that's bowers end game with that is to let the league know you don't play with this kind of a thing so in the pretenders category, we have the Giants, the Astros, and the Yankees. Again, just don't see, I, I don't see them as liable options. I really don't. Next on the list is the Dodgers. The Dodgers I'm placing, I'm placing as the dark horse teams. Nobody ever suspects it's ever going to be the Dodgers until it is. Um, nobody suspected Mookie Betts would be going to the Dodgers. Nobody suspected David Price would be coming along with Mookie Betts. It always seems like the Dodgers always are underneath the radar, but they always have the money. And so I'm placing them in, as dark horse teams because uh, the little tiny information that we know, which isn't much, suspect that the Dodgers' names aren't attached to anything, but they're always under the radar. So that is why the Dodgers are a dark horse team for me. Another dark horse team. The New York Mets. I think the Mets, um, you know, management and ownership is more focused on adding that center field spot and or the third base position. There's been a lot of rumors around the Mets adding Chris Bryant and or Kyle Seeger, uh, you know, as a third baseman. But then also they're still in on the Springer sweepstakes out in center field. So I think the Mets are more interested in adding another position player to their lineup. But don't let that surprise you if they're still not eyeballing Bauer. The New York Mets have arguably the best rotation in baseball. They're getting back Noah Syndergaard. They're top five for sure as far as rotations. And adding Trevor Bauer would solidify that pitching rotation, rotation in 2020. So that is why the Mets are a dark horse team for me. The Angels. The Angels. That's who that is, the Angels, by the way. The Angels of Anaheim. The serious contenders category will be ranked in my order of importance or my order of what I think Bauer is eyeballing. These are completely my hypotheticals. I don't read Bauer's mind. Angels are number one for me in the serious contenders. Angels have a little bit of money. There's been reports that Dodgers would edge them out as far as the money, but I don't think that that is Bauer's main intention is the money. I think the main intention is his image, what he thinks, who he thinks he'll fit in with, the type of guys that he'll be around. I think that that is, will be more important as far as you know, clubhouse interaction. I think he likes, you know, he, he, he would value chemistry over the paycheck 
That's why I have the Angels number one. He'll be in the same clubhouse as Mike Trout. Anthony Rendon is coming back. They've always struggled with pitching. They always have. It's no question. The Angels are are, are just, they always struggle with pitching. They never sign a pitcher. I don't, I don't get it. I don't know why. But Bauer may be able to change that. He may be the one blip in the Angels' history that say, hey, we actually took a pitcher for once. Let's test it out. Let's see how it goes. If he signs with the Angels, I'm suspecting uh, probably a two, three-year contract. Maybe. We'll see. Um, but uh, Angels, number one for me in the serious contenders category. Number two in the serious contenders category, the Padres. That would be scary. If the Padres are able to trade for you, Darvish, Blake Snell, and then sign Trevor Bauer all in the, all in the same offseason, that rotation would be legendary. Not to mention the Padres also have Mike Clevenger. Mike Clevenger won't be pitching in 2021. He's still recovering you know, from his injury, so he'll be returning in 2022. Clevenger, Bauer, both in... You know, both Indians in their past. Padres are number two on my list. Toronto Blue Jays. This might come as a surprise to some people. I do think the Blue Jays are, are um, I think they're operating behind closed doors a lot. And I do think that, they're, that they are a serious contender. Bauer would clearly be the ace on that staff. The Blue Jays are a serious contender, especially if they're able to maybe finagle out a deal for Springer. The Blue Jays, I don't know if you guys have seen, watch my other video on Springer. <clears throat> It'll be at the end of this video in the recommended section. I do believe the Blue Jays are top dog for Springer, Mets being second. If the Blue Jays are able to get Springer, because Bauer is holding out. I know he is. He's very, being very particular. He's waiting for these other deals to, you know, to, to find themselves out, to be placed, to be accepted, to be signed. He's waiting out the market. He's really, really waiting to see where these other free agents are signing. And he's being very particular, and he's eyeballing these things. There's no question about it. He had a reaction to the Lindor trade. You know, he, he's been watching the moves. Watch the Blue Jays, guys. Watch the Blue Jays. Because if, if, if things are true, Bauer's you know, searching out short-term, he's searching out long-term. Time will tell with his YouTube video if he states which one he prefers, short-term or long-term. I don't know. But if he's preferring the long-term, watch these Blue Jays. Watch these Blue Jays because it will be very, very interesting to see if they offer Bauer a contract this offseason. The White Sox. The White Sox. Yes, makes perfect sense for me. They're in the serious contenders category. I'm not sure financially what the White Sox will be able to offer Bauer, but the White Sox. It makes perfect sense for me because of the chemistry thing. Bauer's a fun guy. He's a, he's a strong competitor. He's in, at least from what I gather from the guy, is he's in on let the players play the game, and we play the game to win. The White Sox have that mentality. They're a new age team. They have youth. They play with fun. I see Bauer fitting in with that team perfectly. Really perfectly, I think the chemistry would be there. I really do. I think that he would complement the pitching rotation, the staff, all the players on that roster very well. Watch the White Sox. They are kind of, for me, sitting between the serious contenders and the dark horse teams, kind of, you know, kind of sitting on that line there. So to recap, guys, my serious contenders: the Angels, the Padres the Blue Jays, and the White Sox in that order. My dark horse teams are the Dodgers and the Mets. I don't know where they're at. Um, what I do know is this. Bauer definitely, all these nine teams are on Bauer's radar. All nine. All nine of them. Uh, if, if, if he is really searching out different deals, surely there's just, I mean, Bauer's got the league on watch right now. He's got the league on watch. And um, everybody wants him. 
I mean, for good reason. He's a hell of a pitcher. Well, that's going to do it for this video, guys. I hope you guys liked it. If you did, leave a like on the video. I'd really appreciate it. Go ahead, comment down below with who you think Bauer is going to sign with this offseason. And subscribe. Turn post notifications on so you guys are always updated on when I am uploading fresh new content on MLB offseason news and trades, as well as rumors. Because this is a rumor for sure. Nobody really knows where Bauer's going. All these things are rumors that I've thrown out in this video and my hypotheticals. So make sure you have post notifications on for all the up-to-date information. And for that, that's it. I'm going to wrap it up here. Tabor time out. I didn't have my microphone on. What a dummy. What a dummy. You need to have the old microphone on. Don't you? <laughs> what a dummy. <clears throat> Alright. You ready?